Okay, so um, errors and uncertainties. It, it's easily the most boring topic ever, okay? And I've tried various occasions to try and make it moderately interesting and failed every attempt. Um, I'll, I'll try and go through this as quickly as I can to minimize the pain and agony, uh, but there's no way around of, about going through the information that you need to know, okay? So this, this here breaks down these errors and uncertainties, and it's a bit, it's really important in the real world we were talking about it the other day in, uh, you know, maths, you can use a fraction uh, because you can literally have a quarter. And I just noticed someone else um, had done this. One, it wasn't a third, but that equals 0 0.3 recurring. Uh, you can do that in maths because one over three would be 0 0.33, an infinite number of numbers. In the real world, we would have to have gotten this by measuring it let's say with a ruler, and that would be 1 over 3.0 centimetres, which means that that would have been 0 0.33 to a set number of significant figures. So um, you can't use this recurring dot in physics, because in the real world, you've had to measure something, and you never measure things with an infinite precision. Okay, so um, that in an exam, or that in an exam, would be marked wrong. Everything's measured and everything has an uncertainty. Um, you know, you're not quite sure about what it is because you, you can only measure it to a limited accuracy. So uh, we can categorize these errors or differences between the measured ver value and the accepted value and categorize them in two different ways. Uh, random error and systematic error. Have you come across that term before or not? Okay, um, that's a bit disappointing. I thought you would have done. But let's suppose I'm going to measure something. Um, so for a, a random error, and I'm not just going to write out what's already there, but I'm just going to show you. Imagine I'm measuring the length of something. It's a pretty bad example because measuring the length wouldn't generate very much uncertainty. Uh, timing, timing something to fall. I'm timing something to, to fall, yeah? So uh, imagine timing how long it takes the ball to fall to the ground. So this could be the, the, the time. And I'll take one measurement, and I'll take another measurement, and another measurement, and another measurement, and, and, and over time, if you took more and more and more measurements, what you'd expect is that the measurements would do that. If it was a truly random uh, occurrence about pushing the button and recording it, you'd end up with what's referred to as a normal distribution. There's as much chance of the measured value being above what it should be as there is being below. And you get what's referred to as a normal distribution. If you get on probabilities, hopefully you'll do this in maths. So the, the mean value, the mean value would be the accepted value, if you like, yeah? So if I'm trying to measure how long it takes to fall to fall to the ground, it would be the average of all these measurements I'd taken. Um, and the more measurements I take, the better the distribution becomes and the more confident I can be of the value. A systematic error is, is where it's different by the same proportion or the same amount each measurement. So if my clock had been running slow and I was recording it, then the accepted value, the accepted time might be um, this one. That's really what it is. But because of all the measurements I'm making, the clock's running slowly, They'll all be over here. And that difference is referred to as a systematic error. So that's where all the measurements are off by the same amount or the same proportion. The better example of that actually would be a zero error on the micrometer. You know, I showed you the micrometer and there should be zeroed when you, when you have nothing in the jaws. But actually, it's easy if some gorilla has been over tightening it. For, for when there's nothing in there, it may be reading 0 0.02 millimeters. All of your readings would be bigger by 0 0.02 millimeters than they should have been. Yeah, so, so random errors are due to uh, equal probabilities of measurements either side. Systematic errors are ones which have, uh, are different by the same proportion each time, such as a zero error. Yeah, that's the most common one. How do you deal with random errors? So if you're measuring something and, and it's got a random error, how do you reduce the effect of that? just take more repeats. So to, to uh, reduce the size of a random error, if you like, you just take more measurements. Um, 
for a systematic error, taking more measurements wouldn't make any difference. You know, if I've got a micrometer and there's a zero. Washman in two and so on and so forth. We can't do that because you're only going to measure three, three, um, three measurements. I'll, I'll, I'll describe how we handle that in a second. Okay, so there's two types, random, systematic. Um, and then we're going to categorize uncertainties. That's the difference between what the accepted value is and how confident you'd be about what it should be. Um, and you can break those down into absolute uncertainty and percentage uncertainty. This is often just referred to as uncertainty. So basically when I'm talking about uncertainties, that's what I mean. And then when I'm talking about percentage uncertainties, and, that. and what's the difference? Well, that's just the, um, if you make a single reading, that's how confident you can be, if you like, of what it is, or the range of uncertainty, how unsure, unsure you are about uh, what the value is, or the range within which it lies. So if we're using a ruler, then um, it would be the smallest non-zero reading. So the absolute uncertainty, or uncertainty in a single reading, is the instrument resolution. Yeah, so if I'm using um, the, the scales and the smallest reading is 0 0.01 of a gram, oh sorry, or one gram as it was on our kitchen scale we used, then that's the, that's the instrument resolution. And so I can be confident that the, the, the mass is 32 grams plus or minus one gram. It might be almost 33, or it might be just over 31. And before you say, well, hold on, it might, if it was 32.5 grams, then it would round it to 33. You do not know how the, the scales work. They might not round this last number at all. It may be that it won't show 33 unless it's 33 point something. So you can't make any assumptions about rounding on here. So that's what it would be. It would be 32 plus or minus one gram. And this plus or minus one gram is what we're referring to as the uncertainty instrument resolution. Okay. Because of what I said the other day, if you're measuring something and it was 50 centimeters and you measured something and it was only five centimeters and the uncertainty was 0 0.1 centimeters, that actually is a tiny fraction of this. Makes no difference. We're saying this could be 50.0 plus or minus 0.1. We're saying here this is 5.0 plus or minus 0.1. That's a much bigger proportion of this one than that one is. So um, for various reasons we need to um, uh, show that. So the way to do it is to express this simply as a percentage. So the percentage uncertainty is just the uncertainty over the value expressed as a percentage, times 100. So in the example before, that would be 0 0.1 over 50 times 100, which is 0.2%, or it's 0 0.1 over 5 times 100, which is going to be 2%. So that's all the percentage uncertainty is. We'll use these when you do calculated values of the uncertainty in a calculated value. So if you were doing a, an equation with different things in and adding and multiplying them together and say, so well, what's the uncertainty in my answer? 
you need to know these things and these things. But I'm not going to trouble you with that now because it'd be too much. So let's just get into the habit of, of being confident and work out percentage uncertainties and um, uncertainties. These are typically only expressed to one or at most two significant figures. There's not much point in showing a percentage uncertainty is 0.243%. So 0.2 is good enough. Okay. Right, one last thing, and then we're just gonna do some practice to make this a little bit more obvious. I think by doing it'll be more helpful. Um, what happens if you take repeated readings? So in that case where I had the, the stopwatch and something's falling, uh, and I've got a set of readings, so 30.0, uh, 29.0, 30 Eight and 30.43. Um, well, the, the, the accepted value where we have random uncertainties is the mean or average. So I'm going to work out the average of those three. See what the actual value should be. So that's 30 plus 29.8 plus 30.3 divided by three equals, and I get 30.0333. Recurring. Now then, what value should I write down to what significant figures, or what decimal places, should I record my mean value to? The, 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 you need to be aware that the mean value can't be any more accurate than the measurements you took in the first place. So the mean value has to be to the same resolution. In this case, one decimal place. So watch out for that. The, the, the mean value would be that. So one decimal place. The average can't be any more accurate than the initial measurements you took in the first place. So that's the mean value. So uh, what's the uncertainty? Well, these vary a lot more than 0.1. You know, so the uncertainty is clearly more than 0.1 centimetres. So I'll need to show that somehow. And, and the way that you show the uncertainty in repeated readings is to do the largest value, take away the smallest value, divided by 2. It's basically half the range. So that's simply biggest value, 30.3. 30.3, take away the smallest value, 29.8 divided by 2. So that's uh, 5 over 2, which is uh, 2.5, we'll call that 3. Sorry, 0.25, I beg your pardon. It's 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. So what we're saying is, that's my best estimate but it's varying by about 0.3. So it might be as high as 30.3, or it might be as small as 29.7-ish. Yeah? So that would be the uncertainty in this value. We'll do some calculations saying that again. It'll become obvious, hopefully. If I want the percentage uncertainty in this, the percentage uncertainty in this reading of this mean value, then it would be the uncertainty divided by the value times 100. Mm -hmm. One last thing. Suppose I'd taken three repeats of my ruler and they were all identical. 30.0. Half the range is clearly nothing. So what I'm going to write, write down for the uncertainty in this case, well, all of these have been measured with a ruler, so the uncertainty would be the uncertainty in a single reading. So if you look on here, what it says is, for a repeated measurements, the uncertainty is the bigger of either half the range or instrument resolution. It'll never be zero. It'll always be something. And so it's the larger of either half the range, whatever that is, or the instrument resolution. Okay? So that's that, and I've gone through percentage uncertainties, and I've blasted you with a load of stuff, so now let's just do some practice questions, yeah? Unless anyone has any questions. Turn that off, just for 